The two hardest things to understand are the complex numbers that come out of the software-defined radio and the negative frequencies we see. So what I have here is a signal generator, and I have it set to 100.010 megahertz. So that's just 10 kilohertz above 100 megahertz. And you can see that it's unambiguously a real sinusoidal signal that I'm looking at on the oscilloscope. On the other side of this splitter, I just have it going to two wires that are connected to these grabbers, which are connected to nothing. They're just floating in the air. I've just placed them near the antenna of the software-defined radio. Let's see what signal we get out. So the first thing I'm going to do is give this flow graph a name. I'm going to call it Signal Generator and a title, Signal Generator. Uh, I have to set the sample rate. I will set the sample rate to 1 megahertz for uh, ease of viewing. Uh, first thing I will do is I will put down in Osmocom SDR an RTL SDR source. And if I look at the parameters of this source, the output type is going to be a complex number. I have no choice in the matter. All the other defaults are fine. The sample rate is going to be SAMP rate. And the center frequency is going to be 100 megahertz exactly. And this is what we want. So the software-defined radio will be tuned to exactly 100 megahertz. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at that signal in two different ways. So the first way we'll look at it with the instrumentation uh, under QT is with the QT GUI time sync. So this just plots the sequence of numbers that comes out of this SDR, sequence of complex numbers. The other way we'll look at it is the QT, QT GUI frequency sync, and this plots the frequency spectrum of the sequence of numbers that comes out of this RTL SDR source. So let me play that, I'll save the photograph, signal generator, and what comes up should be both a time and a frequency plot. Okay, so let's first examine this time plot. There are two sinusoidal signals there, one in blue and one in red. I'm going to click the middle mouse button and pause it, and we'll examine the two signals. So signal one is the real part of the complex number that comes out, and signal two is the imaginary part of the complex number that comes out. And if we zoom in, well, if we just look at what the difference uh, in peak-to-peak -peak timing is, this is about 78, and this is about 178. So the difference in time between peak-to-peak -peak of the real part, the blue, is 100 microseconds. 100 microseconds corresponds to 10 kilohertz, and that is what we see here in the frequency plot. If I put my mouse over the peak here, we see a peak is at 0 0.010 megahertz, so 10 kilohertz above zero. And furthermore, if we look at the blue signal, it looks a lot like a cosine. It peaks and then uh, goes to zero and has negative peaks. The red signal, the imaginary part, looks like a sine. When the cosine is at a maximum, the red part, the sine, is at zero. And cosine starts at one and goes down, sine starts at zero and goes up. And of course, these aren't scaled all the way to one because uh, that depends on how close I've moved these, these wires. So let me play that again. Let me change the frequency of the signal generator. So let me move the frequency up. I can change digits here. I'll move the frequency up. And as I move the frequency up, you can see that the frequency of both the cosine-like real part and the sine-like imaginary part are getting higher and higher in frequency. And the spike here is going higher and higher and higher. So now I'm 30 kilohertz above 100 megahertz. Now I'm 40 kilohertz above 100 megahertz. I can keep going. And uh, eventually I will get too fast to clearly uh, see the samples. Let me go back down. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. As I approach exactly 100 megahertz, point 20, point 10, 100 megahertz, as I approach exactly 100 megahertz, what we see is we see that the real and the imaginary part are now extremely slowly varying functions of frequency. So why is this? The clocks in the signal generator and the SDR are not exactly in sync. They drift a little bit with temperature, and uh, you're never gonna get two clocks that are exactly the same. And so what we're seeing here is we're seeing 
the difference in frequency between the signal generator and the SDR. And this difference in frequency should be zero. We should see a constant. But because the clocks are never exact, we see this slowly varying, slowly oscillating signal peaked around zero megahertz. Now let me go down below 100 megahertz. So I'm going to lower the frequency by 10 kilohertz. Oops. There we go. Lower it to 10 kilohertz, 99.99. .99. So now if I look at the peak here, the peak is at negative 10 kilohertz. So negative 0.010 megahertz. And if I look at the signals, they still look sinusoidal. If I were to stop them and measure the time difference, so this is about 224, this is about 234. So peak to peak, it's still 100 microseconds corresponding to 10 kilohertz. But now if you'll notice, the order has, has reversed. So the blue signal, the real part, is now the second signal. So the red peaks and then the blue. And this is how the complex numbers distinguish between positive frequencies and negative frequencies. So for a single tone, positive frequencies correspond to the real part being cosine and the red part being sine, and negative frequencies correspond to the real part being cosine still, but the imaginary part being negative sine. So when cosine peaks, instead of the sine rising from zero, the sign is falling from zero. That's a negative sign. And as I go lower and lower in frequency, let me start this again. As I go lower and lower in frequency, we're always looking at the difference between what the signal generator is outputting and what the RTL-SDR is tuned to 